What's up, guys? Streaming Saturdays. Today is May 9th, 2020, and we're talking about, uh, what is it called? Herd Immunity today. Sweden has uh, been using herd immunity, which means that they are not social distancing at all. They're not. Uh, they're not really uh, closing down schools. They're not closing down businesses. Uh, Sweden has pretty much left everything open exactly the way that it normally is. And a lot of places have praised them for this. Uh, some They're getting a lot of critics as well, upset that they haven't been social distancing and that they haven't been shutting things down. Uh, so I want to kind of look at that and see um, exactly how that's going for them so far. The last I saw, they were actually at a very low uh, rate of cases of coronavirus. And I... Uh, I, I they were pretty far behind us as far as like coronavirus cases go. Um, I want to say that they were like three or four months behind us uh, since their first case. And so I do want to kind of look at uh, how many cases they have so far and how herd immunity is working. Sweden has one of the world's most controversial and closely watched coronavirus strategies. While most countries in Europe implemented near total lockdowns, closing schools and non-essential businesses, in Sweden, people are still free to go about their daily lives. Schools, restaurants and cafes remain open. But has it been worth the risk? Despite the relaxed guidelines, the number of coronavirus-related deaths per million people is far lower in Sweden than here in the locked-down UK. It's even lower than Italy, Spain and France, which have been locked down even longer. It's worth noting Sweden is much earlier in its curve versus other European countries. The death figure could still explode in the coming weeks. So deaths per one million? for Sweden is 319. Deaths per million for the US is 242. So it looks like they're actually having worse deaths because a lot of people have said that the they're not taking care of the nursing homes because of this herd mentality uh, or herd immunity um, strategy that Sweden is going with, where they don't lock anything down, they don't close down schools, they don't stop people from going to work. Now they are... Uh, the older folks are contracting the virus actually at a at a higher rate and are dying fairly uh, more than they are in other countries. And so, um, I I know a lot of people who keep saying like, "Hey, it it works for Sweden, so we need to switch to that over here." I don't think that that's actually working. Like from from watching this, from looking at the numbers, it doesn't look like it's actually working. So here's Sweden right here. Their, uh, their deaths per 1 million is actually higher than the United States. They have a fairly high deaths per 1 million. Same with the Netherlands. Uh, same with Belgium. Germany's not too high. France is up there. Uh, the UK is fairly high. So all of these countries have higher rates of death per 1 million than the United States. And, and the countries that I just named are all around each other, like, uh, like the Netherlands. Okay, so this is 316 per 1 million deaths. That's, that's a lot. And when it has total recovered, they don't even have a number there. Like, they don't even have a number for the total amount recovered. But, yeah, a, a lot of the countries around Sweden, they're not doing so hot right now. Like, this doesn't seem to be working so far.
So what we're doing in Sweden, we can continue to do for a long time, and I think that's going to prove to be very, very important in the long run. The risk relies on trusting the Swedes to adhere to social distancing measures without being forced to. And so far, the country's robust health and care service have been able to cope with the increased pressure. Polling suggests the government's approach was initially popular, but Tegnell is now facing fierce criticism. Even though Sweden's numbers appear good compared to the worst hit countries in Europe, its approach isn't yet proven to work. Far more people in Sweden are dying than in neighboring countries like Denmark, Norway and Finland. I first heard about what Sweden was doing and I thought it was just dumb. The neighboring countries all around Sweden, they all locked down. They've all socially distanced. They're all wearing face masks. But nobody in that video, and it could just be the video. It could just be what the, the people making the video decided to show. But nobody in this video is wearing a face mask. So I'm, I'm not sure if they're just... If they're just picking the few people who aren't wearing face masks to show, but seriously, there's not a single person in this video that's wearing a face mask. So, um, but all of the surrounding countries, they they're all wearing face masks. Like they're all uh, they're all social distancing. They're all closing down schools and parks and businesses and stuff like that. So, it I I thought that this was really dumb that Sweden was doing things this way. 3,220 total deaths compared to somebody like Germany with 7,549. Now, deaths per 1 million, Germany is at 90. Sweden is at 319. Switzerland is 211. So, yes, Sweden is much worse in the deaths per million. Europe, its approach isn't yet proven to work. Far more people in Sweden are dying than in neighboring countries like Denmark, Norway and Finland. Most of these implemented lockdowns early to prevent the virus from taking hold. One third of Sweden's deaths have been among the elderly and critics have accused the country's public health agency of failing to protect those in care homes. In the long run, Sweden's approach to lockdown may prove advantageous for its economy, leaving it in a stronger position to bounce back. Its light touch could result in a relatively smaller economic contraction than the rest of Europe. We do it by slightly different methods, and that means that in Sweden we have used a lot more voluntary means than in other countries, because that's the way we usually work. But Sweden's scientific community disagrees with Tegnell's strategy. Last week, more than 2,000 doctors, professors, and researchers signed a petition urging the government to introduce more aggressive lockdown measures. I think that is a tradition here in Sweden that we should trust the authorities, we should trust their experts. But I'm a scientist and I don't trust authorities, I trust data. Dr. Cecilia soderberg nossler believes that prioritizing herd immunity is dangerous and can't be justified. I'm sorry, I know I've said this a hundred times. It doesn't make sense. Herd immunity without a vaccine does not make sense. Data that we at least have access to and the development that we've seen in different countries just say that, no, this is not a path that is safe to take. Nothing is safe here because many people are going to suffer. People are already suffering. The death rate in Sweden is accelerating faster than other Scandinavian countries. And even with efforts to keep businesses open, the economy is still predicted to shrink by up to 8% this year. Dr. Tegnell still defends his plan. I think there is no data that anybody uses that can um, say anything about the evidence of any method we're using today. We are in completely new territory, all of us. So we're actually following the development and we are looking at how well this social distancing work and so far it seems to work reasonably well.